Would you believe me if I told you crypto was controlled by an insider cartel who manipulate the markets through retail panic, trading against their users, oracle mispricings, and more? And this cartel includes some of the biggest names in the crypto industry. You would say, dang, Chico, why are you so crazy? Well, let's see who the crazy one is after this video, because it's time for Chico Crypto. Now, if I'm going to talk about the cartel who controls crypto, I have to begin this episode off with Tether USDT. Tether is the blood of the crypto markets. If you look at the top 10 crypto exchanges ranked on CoinGecko, they almost all look the same. Binance, with over 16 billion in 24 hour volume, its breakdown is ruled by Tether. Basically, 75% of that 16 billion is done in USDT. They even have their own stablecoin, BUSD, yet Tether rules. KuCoin with over 2.2 billion in 24 hour volume, over 95% Tether. Huobi with over 2 billion is nearly 95% too. OKX with over 1.8 billion is over 96% Tether. BitGit with just under 1 billion is over 98% Tether. Crypto.com with over 730 million is nearly 92% Tether. Like I said, Tether is the blood of the crypto markets and it's a big driver of the Bitcoin price. Longhash has a great chart that shows this through USDT circulation and the Bitcoin price. Looking over one year, you can see whenever Tether prints, aka the circulation increases, the Bitcoin price usually goes up. Whenever Tether printing stops or it slows down, the Bitcoin price falls. And when redemptions happen, aka circulation decreases, the Bitcoin price goes down hard, like what happened recently. So who runs Tether? Well, Tether is currently owned by iFinex, who also owns the crypto exchange Bitfinex. Going to Tether's website, we can see their corporate structure. Jean-Louis Van Der Veld is their CEO. Giancarlo Devasini is the CFO. Stuart Hogner is their general counsel. Paulo Ordonio is their CTO. Leonardo Real is their compliance officer. And Claudia Ligorio is their COO. Now everyone in this group has been public on the scenes. Paulo and Stuart have given interviews, for example, on CNBC. Leonardo has given keynote speeches at crypto conferences. And Claudia is Paulo's wife. The only two who are mysteries are the Hefes, the cartel leaders, Giancarlo and Van Der Veld. This Bloomberg article on Tether titled, Anyone Seen Tether's Billions? shows this very well. They say, the chief executive officer listed on Tether's website, J.L. Van Der Veld, is a Dutchman who lives in Hong Kong and seems to never have given an interview or spoken at a conference. The CFO is Giancarlo Devancini, a former plastic surgeon from Italy who was once described on Tether's website as the founder of a successful electronics business. The only reference to him that turned up in a search of Italian newspapers showed he was once fined for selling counterfeit Microsoft software. He didn't respond to emails or messages on Telegram where he goes by Merlin the Withered. Tether's lawyer, Stuart Hogner, told me by phone that Vandervelt and Devancini prefer to avoid the limelight. Just like drug cartel leaders like to shy away from the limelight, Tether's leaders do the same. They are men of mystery. Although Giancarlo has been caught out in public a few times. Here he is at a Salvadorian crypto event with Samson Mao and his fiance Valentina Piccozzi, an Italian artist. And here is a picture of Giancarlo with his fiance once again. Now let's check out a couple of her art pieces. First is a person with a sheep head holding a sign that says, we are all Satoshi. Next, a person holding a sign with a sheep head that reads, in crypto we trust. Is she calling Bitcoin and crypto believers sheep? Well, check out the last one. Some Bitcoin logos at the bottom. And then it reads, sorry, you're fucked. And then, sorry, we're not federal and have no reserve. Now, everyone knows about the mystery of if Tether is fully backed, as they have never completed an outside audit in their history. Is this just them rubbing it in our faces? Well, let's get deeper into the crypto cartel. 
Beginning with those that hodl the most, USDT. Here is a breakdown of entities who hold the most tethers. As we can see, three entities make up nearly 75% of all tethers issued. That is Alameda Research, Cumberland, and Binance Market Makers. So let's dive into Alameda Research. From this Trust Nodes article, Alameda Research reveals tether records, we can see it was founded by Sam Bakeman Freed, and they defend tether on a big scale. From the article it says, I've been minting and redeeming USDT on an institutional scale for over three years with multiple deaths, said Ryan Salam, head of OTC at Alameda Research, before adding, while admittedly I've done far more mints than redemptions, below you'll find all USDT redeemed in my current role. Note the process has always been smooth. Now why would Alameda be defending Tether, talking about how easy it is to redeem? Well number one, they are part of the insiders who can redeem Tether. From Tether's terms of service it says, in order to cause Tether tokens to be issued or redeemed directly by Tether, you must be a verified customer of Tether. No exceptions will be made to this provision. The right to have Tether tokens redeemed or issued is a contractual right personal to you. Tether reserves the right to delay the redemption or withdrawal of Tether tokens if such delay is necessitated by the liquidity or unavailability or loss of any reserves held by Tether to back the Tether tokens. You have to be a verified customer of Tether, and Tether reserves the right to delay redemption or withdrawal just in case they lose access to their reserves. So what is a verified customer? Well, I tried to become one and got to the verification page. As we can see, it says, check the minimum requirements on our fees page and note that Tether only processes transactions equal to a minimum USD 100,000. Yes, retail cannot redeem Tether. Only those who have a minimum of 100K in USDT, aka institutions, market makers, and the inside the cartel club. So, everyone should know, starting May 10th to today, over 10 billion in tethers have been redeemed as the market cap fell off of a cliff. The reason for this? Well, Tether was losing its peg, which was causing retail panic spread by the big news organizations. Coindesk, Decrypt, and even Forbes were covering it. So, what did retail do? They jumped out of Tether at these discounted prices on exchanges like FTX. Now we know Sam Bakeman is the founder of Alameda, the largest Tether holder, but he also founded and owns the FTX exchange. He's part of the inside club that can redeem Tether. Of course FTX was taking advantage of this opportunity to pick up Tethers from retail at discounted prices and then redeem them for profit one to one. And it wasn't only FTX, it was all the big exchanges doing this, the ones we covered with the largest USDT volumes, Binance, KuCoin, Huobi and more. It was a lot of money being redeemed as retail panic. Why do you think during the heat of all of this, Sam Bankman said this on Twitter, May 17th? Why didn't our wire transfer land? Looks like bank fucked it up. It's all manual, I think. If only there were a cleaner way of sending value. Well, when you're trying to get billions of dollars during retail panic, sometimes a bank will take their time. So how close are FTX, Bankman, Alameda, and Tether? Well, we have learned here lately the Tether cartel might just be closer to these entities than anyone thinks. Let's make the connections now. Remember old Stuart Hogner, general counsel for Tether? Well, looking at his LinkedIn, we can see back in 2006, he was previously general counsel for a company called Excapsa. Excapsa is Excapsa Software, the parent company of Ultimate Bet, the online gambling and poker platform. And if you didn't know, Ultimate Bet was center stage in a poker cheating scandal that rocked the online gambling world. From this Slate.com article, we can get a sense of what happened. 
In 2008, this point was underscored when acting on complaints from disgruntled players who couldn't figure out why they kept losing, investigators found that Russ Hamilton, a former poker champion and consultant to the prominent Costa Rica-based and Kanawaki-licensed online poker site UltimateBet.com, had cheated players out of millions of dollars with the help of God Mode software that let him peek at other players' hands. The scandal ruined Hamilton's reputation, and Ultimate Bet officials rushed to assure people that Hamilton had been acting alone. Yeah, software was built so a player could use a god mode to peek at other players' hands. Wasn't Excapsa, the parent company, a software firm? Wait, this was in 2008. How could Stewart be involved or connected? Well, this was going on before 2008. As we can see from this article, just from last year, it says, Under the terms of the agreement, Excapsa will pay $15 million to blast off LTD, the Tokuiro-controlled company that originally acquired Ultimate Bet. This payment will be used immediately to refund players who were affected by the cheating scandal that Tokuiro inherited when it purchased the business from Excapsa. Yup, the new owners inherited a cheating platform built by Excapsa. This was ruled in court. But where does FTX come into this? Well, looking at a Dan, aka Daniel Friedberg's LinkedIn, we can see he has been with FTX going on two and a half years as their general counsel and now chief regulatory officer. But I don't see any Excapsa listed in his profile. Well, he leaves that out for good reason. From a Haley's Poker blog who covered the ultimate bet and Excapsa scandal, we can see they say, but even Hogner pales to one Daniel S. Friedberg, one of the true secret bad people behind the Excapsa facade. Friedberg was there from the very start, and his role in online poker matters follows a strange route indeed. Friedberg did quite well for himself, garnering several million shares of Excapsa stock in addition to his pay, with said shares distributed across several different ownership entities. Then the UIGEA happened, the IPO collapsed, and the hasty sale to Absolute Poker was arranged, with the terms of the sale very unfavorable to Excapsa's rank and file shareholders. Amid all of this, Friedberg switched sides, going to work for Absolute Poker and becoming Scott Tom's attorney as well. You read it right, Friedberg kept himself tied to the money stream, wherever it went. And finally, there is this, an audio recording of the insiders discussing the scandal. From the article, it says, also present at the recorded gathering were Ultimate Bet founder and CEO Greg Pearson and Ultimate Bet attorneys Daniel Friedberg and Sanford Millar. The men began the meeting by discussing the God Mode software designed to view opponents' whole cards during real money games. Let's just hear from the audio recording what Dan had to say about this. Give me an idea of a settlement process. Get the numbers. Just the ideal process. The, the ideal thing would be is if we, at this point, it seems like they know that the ideal, ideal scenario is like pushing Greg to come out and say, yes, the thing was used, but it was only not come out with any names. May have to come out with a line like it was a former consultant the company that had access. Mm -hmm. yeah. The biggest thing, though, is kind of limit this thing. It's so big, uh, it's like one of the biggest thefts ever. Yup, Daniel didn't want the scandal to come out, but if it must, they would lie. The ideal thing they would do, saying a former consultant to the company uh, took advantage of a server flaw by hacking into the software client. Lies, lies, lies. What are the odds two of Excapsa's former lawyers now work for Tether and FTX? It's not a coincidence. They hold the cards now to the crypto markets, leverage trading and all, and they are playing God mode on the daily. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time.